Hi everyone, my name is Peyton, and in my previous videos I showed you how you can make a material showroom like this for rendering out portfolio quality renders of your materials. However, if you would prefer to just have an existing showroom, I am offering my material showroom that I created and set up for you to use in the link below. This showroom has a lot of features and it's pretty easy to quickly add a new texture and actually build out your shader in little to no time. In this video here, I actually want to show you the features of the showroom and how to use it. Um, it's pretty easy, as I said, to add the textures to the scene and set it all up uh, and then basically have some portfolio quality renders. Uh, also has the video and everything else that can work with it as well. And then, um, yeah, so basically what I want to do is actually start here in the editor. And as you can see, if you open it up, it should look exactly like this. Uh, the coffee bean material is included in the video um, or in the the coffee bean material is included in the pack as well but as you open it up it'll be flat like this and all uh, and so basically what you'll want to do is with your own textures that you made in substance designer or even ones that you might have made in inside of unreal engine uh, you basically just want to bring in those textures or have those set to, uh, ready to be like set up and so in here just to save some time i brought in uh, a other texture that I have besides the coffee bean just because I wanted to show uh, how you would do it with your own textures and so what we're going to do first and this is mainly just because of the displacement that we're going to be making on it um, we're going to want to duplicate out uh, one of these assets or at least all of them uh, the reason why we're duplicating it is because when we're doing our displacement uh, if you go to actually re-import it by clicking here and then going and like re-importing base mesh, if you don't have the original like location that you imported it in from, then it's kind of difficult and that's not going to work. So instead, I suggest just making a duplicate. That way you don't have to re-import uh, anything or revert it every single time you want to do a different revision with the displacement. And with the displacement itself inside of uh, Unreal Engine 5, it does create the actual geometry onto the mesh. And so that's why, of course, we want to have it separate. That way, the geometry is not baking onto this mesh. It's actually doing this other one. So what I'm going to do real quick is go ahead and just click on our sphere here. And I'm just going to replace it with this sphere. So it should be the exact same, everything else, materials are already applied to it. Um, and that's all we need to do for that one. And so now what I'm going to do is go over to my materials. And with the materials, uh, what's really nice is I set up this master material. And it has everything pretty much um, like plugged in with parameters exposed and all. So what you should be able to do is just right click here and you can create a material instance of this parameter i'm going to name it my brick sphere and i'm going to name it because the reason why i'm naming it after the sphere as well is because uh with the tiling amount uh, the displacement can't really tile after you've baked it and so having a different material for the different like shapes and all uh, can also be nice but we have that so now should look like this I can just go ahead and drag this in and so right now yeah it's just a kind of the um, like flat material and I'm gonna double click and open up my brick sphere so as you see here in the instance you actually have uh, these little groups over here um, and basically what you do is by default they're all turned off that way it's a little bit easier for you to read but if you have a base color map, which, you know, most textures do, you can turn that. Um, and then you actually want to change it from false to true. And so now you'll see that, yeah, it's popping up with the coffee bean. And so I'm going to do all of the ones that I actually need. So my base color, my normal map, my roughness, my AO map. So you can basically make all of those true. And the brick that I'm bringing in does have a metallic map. If you do have a metallic map, um, you know, that's what you would turn on, but I'm not going to because of my other material. And you will also notice that as I turn that on, it enabled the uh, locations for the texture maps to be enabled as well. 
And then there is also a roughness intensity that was enabled when the roughness turns on. Um, so that gives you a couple of other parameters to work with. But now, of course, I don't want the coffee beans. So what I'm going to do is click on all of these. And actually, I could either actually type in you know, my brick and find, I believe I'm looking for my AO. So I'm going to click back there and then type in my brick here, find my base color, brick here, normal, and last one for the roughness. So there we go. We have all of that in, should be working correctly. And then another thing I want to enable is my tiling amount, just because every texture is going to be different with how it's tiling. Um, so having this parameter here is really nice because I can actually set the tiling amount inside of the engine and, um, you know, basically yeah, get those results real quick there. So looks like it is working overall. I think nothing else needs to be changed at the moment here. So this is what it should look like now in our scene. And we have our texture and everything on the ball. Of course, it's still pretty flat and all. And we have a couple of other things we want to do with it real quick. Um, but at least we have the texture going. So what I'm going to do here now is go up to modeling. And the modeling mode should be uh, enabled already. If not, you just need to go to plugins and enable the uh, modeling mode. But I'm going to go here. And as I click on my sphere one, I'm going to go down and displace it. So one thing that we, of course, have to uh, factor in to this displacement uh, when we get to doing it. Um, as you see, this is going to pop up over here. And right now it's just doing a Perlin noise. So it's pretty much breaking our texture. We want to actually grab our texture 2D map instead. And I'm going to find my height map, which is something that I brought in with my new texture. And you would want to as well. And so I'll just scroll down here, find that height, and should be a good start for it. But you might notice that it looks like it might be slightly off. And what I need to do is actually click on my material here and look at the tiling amount. So uh, we are tiling this texture by 3. And so that means that over here in my UV scale, I also need to set this to be three. That way the actual height map here that's displacing the mesh and the texture uh, lines properly and we get yeah our correct results. I'm going to pump up the subdivisions and yeah, it's starting to look a little bit better. And then I'm going to yeah maybe play around with the displacement intensity. Um, so let's see a five doesn't look too bad um might have to do a 10 go back to what it was before i think something in between uh, we don't want it to be too bumpy so and now i'm going to go back down to a five just because of like how the the grass and uh, everything is kind of rendering um, but yeah that's not looking too bad so far so we have all of that set I'm going to turn off the recalculate normals because I just wanted to use the existing normals that I already have. Um, basically, it's just going to double down on like since the geom geometry is being changed, it's going to recalculate the normals for that geometry. Generally, it'll uh, just basically make the uh, shadows a bit harsher and look slightly off. Um, so I suggest just yeah, not worrying about that in here. And now I'm going to hit accept. So it might take a second for it to actually just uh, apply to the sphere one, but uh, soon, of course, the geometry will be actually yeah, applied to it. And we can move on to basically one or two other options uh, with the, the ball, and then we should be pretty good. Cool. So now it has finished compiling, and I'm going to switch over from modeling mode back over to our selection mode. And if I go to the mesh in my models, you'll notice that the mesh itself actually has geometry on it. And this is what I mean. It would have affected your actual sphere. So being able to just duplicate this off makes it super quick to work in here. And you don't have to constantly be bringing in your sphere again or like resetting anything. You can basically have a different geometry piece for each of your uh, materials that you have. And it makes it, yeah, pretty clean. 
So we're still free flying around this scene, but I also have a camera in here that's already locked to a location. So if you right click this, I can pilot it and basically it is set up um, almost orthographic like and you can of course change your field of view and everything over here with your camera as well um, but a couple of things that I want to actually work on um, is going to be the lighting real quick so yeah I basically have three different lights in here um, I guess four cont counting the skylight but this would be what you're actually going to adjust as you need to yeah make iterations Per each of the materials. Every material is going to be different with how the, the colors and all are working with your lighting, so you are going to have to adjust. The coffee bean was darker, so for this one it's a pretty bright, I'd say like green and brick. Um, so I'm going to probably have to calm this down a little bit so it's not as bright. And also I had a lot more cavities as well with the coffee bean. So with this I can just basically, uh, there's less blocking, creating shadows and all. So I'm going to need to probably just lessen the intensity of the skylight here. So yeah, you can even turn these on and off and see some of the results. But I'm going to first start with my skylight, maybe taking that down a little bit and it's not too bad. I have two lights over here as well. So this was kind of a, a cooler light and then this was also a cooler light. Um, one was like a wider one and then the other one's bluer. Uh, might just need, you know, two different lights as opposed to the three. Uh, it really depends on how you're kind of rendering out. Uh, one other thing to factor in as well is with materials, some of them look better on different shapes. So I would say that the uh, bricks might not work as well on the sphere as the uh, coffee beans did, but they'd probably work better on the cylinder and the coffee beans might not look as good on the cylinder. So really think about like not every single material is going to work on like all three shapes that you have. Um, and so, you know, you don't have to use all three of them really just try to use the shapes that I would say work best for your specific material that you have. Uh, and I think you'll get the, the most out of it. So, um, yeah, coming back in here, I'm probably going to maybe bump this up a bit. change the attenuation radius uh, and I think this is one of those things too with the material where I could potentially even change the roughness a bit um, maybe make it a little bit shinier if I wanted to so as you can see here yeah you can basically adjust it just by switching the intensity there um, with that parameter and then if I just pull it off slightly off screen that way I can see it a bit better you can see how that can yeah, change it. It's really nice for just quick iteration inside of the engine. Um, so I think that's working pretty well. Might calm this light down a bit. I'm using the temperature right now. Um, yeah, I'll keep it a bit of a cooler light. And then I'm going to push it back some. That way I get more uh, stronger contrast and I'm going to start to get some of the shadows as well. I think that would be really nice. Uh, maybe bring down the attenuation radius. And then my skylight as well, going over here. It again is basically doing that fill light that we have going in the, the middle part here. So, you know, if you want stronger contrast, you bring that down. And then the different fogs also have some color change. So if you go up here to your atmospheric fog, um, you can see the Rayleigh scattering. Um, I currently have it as like a lighter blue, but if you'd like to adjust it for whatever reason, if you want like more of a dry kind of tone with like a, a warmer color or cooler tone with a yeah cooler color than you can. Um, but this is basically just, you know, you're going to go through and I would say tweak a couple of these things, but it's really just offering the, the benefit of not having to, um, you know, set too much up. It really is 
plugging in your textures, getting them into uh, your scene, checking them out on your mesh itself, uh, and then yeah, basically rendering out your pieces. If you'd like to switch the sphere as well to like one of the other cylinder um, like shapes, you just drag that cylinder over. Now we have a cylinder, and this is what I meant by the um, the actual like because of how the UVs are working on it. Um, like the sphere and the cylinder have different resolution. And so you do have to slightly adjust your tiling amount for each of those. So it's going to be tiling a little bit more on the cylinder. There you go. And yeah, so that is about it, at least pertaining to how all of the models work as well as the materials and the different uh, different features in here with all the instancing. Um, wanted to mention one other thing as well is that, of course, the actual still shot rotation. Um, this is a level sequence that I already have set up. And so let's say that we liked that. Um, we're good with our actual material. Then what I can do now is if I just hit simulate up here, it's going to play the actual rotation of the sphere and all. So you can see that it's basically yeah, rotating in the scene. Um, and so if this ever breaks, just in case uh, you are changing it or anything, it should be fine if you just drag in your mesh to this location because it's actually referencing this right here in the outliner. Uh, but just in case, if not, it is a level blueprint. So you can just open it up here and you can see that it is basically just adding a rotation uh, movement component to our sphere specifically. So if you have anything else you want to rotate as well, you basically just drag it from the outliner to here and then plug it into the target and it should work. Um, additionally, like if you need to change the value of that, you can just change the rotation rate actually here in the rotating movement at this variable at uh, yeah, this location. Um, and then what other thing? So as you have those simulations um, basically being able to be played when the yeah it begins play, the actual level sequence here, uh, all it is pretty much is a camera. So it's referencing that camera that we have set up. And as you can see, if I go through the timeline, nothing's really happening. And that's just because it will only rotate when we're beginning to play. So if you were to render this out uh, as a movie or um, video sequence, then it will, of course, rotate the uh, object. And then you can basically get a rotation of your actual material. Uh, so that's really nice, you know, just because we already have it set up and all so you can really quickly, no matter what uh, shape that you have in there, be able to um, do some quick turnarounds of your materials as well uh, after you've gotten everything settled uh, and just basically just yeah export it from here. So that should be pretty easy. Um, but yeah, besides that, that's about it in regards to the material showroom. I uh, hope you found this helpful. And if you have any other questions, of course, feel free to reach out. But that is about it for now.